Hi there, it's Lacey Olala. Today is July 10th, 2012. Um, I've been on bed rest now for 20 days and um, I am officially 34 weeks and 2 days. I'm getting ever so closer to the goal, which was 35 weeks of uh, pregnancy when they initially put me on bed rest and, um, and I'm taking 35 weeks and anything else I can get so I'm super excited about that um, just wanted to give you an update last week I did not have a doctor's appointment because on my previous doctor's appointment she said that she'll see me in two weeks so I pretty much skipped last week um, I didn't have any problems any complications um, I felt really good you know about everything um, and just kind of just pretty much stayed in the bed um, you know that's my motto is to uh, rest as much as possible um, during this period so I can um, prolong uh, the length of time that my baby's inside of me so that's that's the goal here um, I wanted to bring this up and some of you may have already started thinking about it some of you may have not started thinking about it um, but it's called a birthing plan and um, I had a conversation with my doctor several months ago maybe around my the end of my first trimester or somewhere around the beginning of my second trimester I had some questions with regards to my labor and delivery and how things went the first time around with my first daughter and um, we summed up the conversation and she told me that hey you may want to consider doing a birth plan and I'm like a birth plan what and she was like yeah go online you can find them just about anywhere um, I recommend babycenter.com and you know all this good stuff so just this week that's what I did I went to babycenter.com and um, I found a birth plan and um, I read through it and it had things that I never really thought about before you know it, it brought up topics and subjects that I never really thought about before and I was like oh wow well maybe I should take this into consideration so um, I'm just gonna do a quick run through of my birth plan I'm not gonna talk about the things that I did not pick but I will talk about the things that I did pick and probably you know go into why on some of those things but um, the birth plan that I found at babycenter.com it was pretty much four pages and it covered everything from general amenities to what your um, pain management process is going to be to you know how are you going to feed your baby and things like that so let's just give it a really quick run through um, the first thing that it brought up was attendance and for my attendance, I picked my husband to be um, with me during labor and delivery. I also picked my mother, since my mother's here, um, I picked my mother to be in the uh, room with me during labor and delivery. And, um, and my child, I picked her to be in the room with us during labor only. And that, I did that because number one it's great for her to be a part of the process and for me personally I think delivery might be like a little too intense for her but um, but for her to be there with mommy and kind of rub my belly and you know be excited about her little sister coming I think you know I think that's kind of okay for me so um, but my daughter is in preschool she's our only child and just in case we can't get a babysitter before we run off to the hospital I needed to let them know that I was okay with my daughter being in the room during um, during labor so um, in terms of amenities um, I chose that I would like to bring music I would like to dim the lights and I would like to take pictures and our video during labor and delivery during the first labor and delivery we took a few snapshots it was okay but I want to capture more this time for the simple fact that it may be my last time around so um, so I figured you know 
if it's the last trip, you know, get you some good pictures, right? So, um, so that's what I'm doing there. Uh, okay, hospital admission and procedures. Once I'm admitted, I like my partner to be allowed to stay with me at all times. That's really important to me. Um, I don't have a doula, but I have a hubba, a hubba. <laughs> And I do want him to be with me um, during all times because it helps to just just to have him close um, to me, especially during a process like this. And um, and I would prefer that only my practitioner, nurse, and my guests uh, to be present in the room. No residents, medical students, or other hospital personnel. You know, I understand it's important. Uh, for medical students to observe and be a part of that process but just this time they're gonna have to be a part of that process with someone else um, you know and, and I've, I've, uh, I've let people observe and stuff before but I don't want to do it this time uh, pain relief well I'm skipping labor props because I'm pretty much gonna stay in the bed um, I, I already know that that's my personality that's my style that's what I've known previously um, and I'm not doing a natural birth so once I receive an epidural or certain type of medications I already know that a birthing stool a birthing chair a squatting bar or a birthing pool and tub will not be an option for me um, it's nothing that I had planned for um, but so I just know I, I need to skip that part. But if you're if you're planning a natural birth and your hospital will permit that, you may want to, you know, talk to your doctor about, you know, doing some of those options. Uh, pain relief. You know, on my first daughter, I was like, okay, look, I don't want any drugs in my body. I don't want an epidural, you know all this other stuff and and uh but that was my plan and the plan changed and that was that's another thing i'm going to talk to you about about this birthing plan so even though i didn't have a plan in paper i had a mental plan and i knew i did not want any pain uh any any outside drugs or anything like that in my body so what i did was uh you know my water broke we went to the hospital we followed the steps but because my water broke they needed to progress the um, the labor and delivery so I was told and as I did more research I found that you know you don't want to be in labor for a long period of time with the water with your sack um, broken because that can you know be a potential for infection and you know endanger the child and, and what we want is a healthy happy mom and a healthy happy baby so um, they brought in the Pitocin OMG the Pitocin came and and I've heard rumors about the Pitocin I already knew it was like you know insane like back-to-back -back contractions you know it'll be just more difficult for me to handle it on my own so once they brought in the uh, the Pitocin I made the decision right then and there to do the epidural and uh, once I did the epidural I did not have any regrets about doing the epidural for the simple fact that um, I was able to I felt as though I was able to um, enjoy the process of my labor and delivery better instead of having to focus on pain management I was able to focus more so on the birth of my child so um, so I was okay with that at that point you know I had these ideas before getting into the medical room or getting into the um, the hospital room or whatever but when reality uh, came into play I knew I had to um, make a decision and I feel as though I made the best decision this time around um, since I've gone through labor and delivery with an epidural once I figure let's do that again that was nice <laughs> so I'm opting for the epidural um, <clears throat> uh, massage uh, and also medication so you know um, I know there are places where you can get great little handheld massage tools not necessarily the ones that vibrate but they have like balls 
you know they're round and they just glide over your back smoothly and you may want to look into getting some massage tools like that and you can have your you know spouse or doula or whomever to to rub that on your back um, especially if you're ha having a lot of um, labor pains in your back so <clears throat> so those are my options for pain relief massage medication and epidural um, if I decide I want medicinal pain relief I'd prefer and then again you know that's um, an epidural or a spinal block and sy systematic uh, medication so I'm I'm perfectly okay with that at this at this stage in my life <laughs> at this stage in my life um, pushing when it comes time to push I decided that I would like to be coached on when to push and how long to push that's pretty much how things went with my daughter um, <clears throat> the physician my OBGYN you know she was down in position and she was monitoring everything and I trust her that's a very important thing you need to trust your physician I trust her and um, and she told me when to push she told me you know okay stop you know she gave me a lot of guidance with regards to pushing and we were able to deliver my daughter without me having an episiotomy so I'm really super excited about that and hopefully I can do that again but that's also in the birth plan and I'll talk to you about that too so that was